Hello everybody, in today's video I am so happy to share with you my complete guide to playing the coveted Carol Khan defense. This is one of the best counter-attacking options to pawn to e4 and has been my personal weapon against it for over a year now. In this video I am going to cover all of the main lines as well as some of the most important sidelines, let's get into it. Alright, so after pawn to e4, and pawn to c6, this constitutes the Carol Khan defense. First off, why do we actually play c6 at all? The idea of this move is that on the next move, we are almost certainly going to play pawn up to d5. And if white captures, we can recapture with the c pawn, at which point we would just have a good, strong pawn on d5. Along with that, it also has the added benefit of opening up this very important diagonal for our queen. So, white here will most of the time play pawn up to d4 at which point we will reply with pawn to d5 and this right here is the biggest branching point of the entire Carol Khan. They have to decide what to do with this pawn and first we're going to look at the advanced variation in which they push it up to e5 and against this move which is white's most common option against the Carol Khan, we're going to play pawn to c5 the bot Vinic Carl defense. What we are doing by playing c5 is we are gambiting the c pawn and white's best try to get advantage against us is to accept the pawn but if they do end up capturing then now these pawns are now split, this pawn's much weaker, this pawn is very weak and we're going to get a lot of counterplay in return. First, before we look at the accepted line, let's look at the very popular, and by very popular, I mean it is by far the most common move, the move C3 here. This meek option does not bravely accept the pawn and instead solidly defends their center if we were to capture. However, here you are going to win a lot of games and we're going to exploit white's biggest weakness, which is their D4 pawn. So first we're going to play knight to C6 here immediately put some more pressure and white will try to remedy that most likely with knight to f3 at which point we capture and white captures back now white's biggest weakness here that is very very hard for them to get rid of is their d4 pawn it is not defended by any other pawns and because the e pawn is too far pushed up and the c pawn is simply gone no pawns can defend this meaning it is very very weak and our game plan here is essentially just going to keep attacking and attacking and attacking it until white cannot defend it anymore so first we're going to play bishop to g4 here the idea is we are indirect putting pressure on the pawn because we are pinning the knight which is one of the key defenders of this pawn and if white just plays like a mindless pawn up to h3 we already have an advantage here because we're going to capture the knight if white captures back of the queen then we simply take on d4 and we're just up a pawn and if they instead capture with the g pawn they do keep the defense of this d pawn so they're not down any material but their king side is now permanently ruined and you're going to have a long lasting advantage for the rest of the game into any end game so that is safe to say that you're going to get a pretty big advantage if they just play like a mindless h free or something like that most people here instead play bishop to e2 and undo the pin at which point we simply play pawn to e6 opening up our bishop but more importantly we're actually opening up this square for our knight to come to e7 and reroute to f5 and the idea is once it gets to f5 we're putting more pressure on the d pawn and if white here simply goes like pawn to h3 once again this move in so many positions is just poison we once again will trade here but now we have a different approach to win a pawn queen to b6 we once again see the advantage of moving the c pawn early we get this diagonal and now white is simply going to lose a pawn because um the d4 pawn is hanging and if white defends it their only ways with the bishop then the b2 pawn hangs now and we can capture and if white can try like knight to d2 they can get a playable position but after like bishop to b4 we have a big advantage here not a big advantage but we do have a sizable advantage because we are just up a pawn white does not have enough compensation in return and we have a very good position so once again that can uh, show you how 
fast H3 can just turn into complete dynamite for them. Instead, most people here play the much more reasonable castles, at which point we go for the other plan. We play knight g to e7, and then knight to f5, putting more pressure on the pawn. Now white really wants to defend it, so they will play bishop to e3. And if you get a position like this, you do have to be a little careful here. A lot of people would just snap take and white would recapture and you might think, oh well, now white gets these double pawns, this is very good for us. But the problem is we can't really attack these pawns and now white's biggest weakness, their deep pawn, is actually protected so we just fix their weakness for them we have no reason to do that and that move gives away a lot of our advantage instead we want to keep our strong knight on f5 and instead just develop like bishop to e7 and after something like h3 this trade now happens castles let's say rook to c1 we now have a very key pawn break here f6 and after a likely trade here we now have yet another piece putting pressure on the d4 pawn we can then potentially go queen to b6 um attack the b2 pawn and add even more pressure you have great chances in this position and in all these positions with the very meek c3 you're going to have a lot of fun games and a lot of games you're going to be able to win very fast all right so that is the weak c3 line but now let's get into white's best try for an advantage which is accepting the gambit and capturing on c5 so if they do this they now have these two split and both weak pawns and we can immediately try to attack one of them with e6 and we're going to get a setup very reminiscent of the french now the c5 pawn is attacked and white has two main options here those being pawn to a3 which i'll get into afterwards and bishop to e3 and this bishop to e3 line is the one line where white can end up keeping the pawn but you are going to get so much compensation in return, it doesn't even matter. So here we play knight to d7, attacking the c pawn once again, as well as attacking the e pawn. It is a fork, but white can play the lucky bishop to b5, pinning us right here so we cannot capture just yet. But now we play knight to e7. I does kind of look kind of weird having both our knights here blocking out both of our bishops but it doesn't really matter because white has no way to punish us and now white will most likely go c3 and now you can play knight to c6 here and just get a relatively even position where you're going to end up winning back the pawn but i propose you actually have a bit more fun and play the move a6 this move is essentially asking white what are you going to do from this position if they just back up to a4 then now we play knight to c6 and after like knight to f3 we can now capture on c5 and this is about an even position we regain the pawn we have very good development and you have great chances here but if they do end up trading on d7 then now we recapture with the bishop and after knight to f3 knight to f5 attacking the bishop and bishop move to d4 we are not going to win the pawn back however here we are going to get a ton of compensation because we trade on d4 and then play b6 white has no better option here except to capture and now we capture back with the queen and white has to be incredibly careful here our queen on b6 is now attacking the b2 pawn and if they just play like a weakening b3 we already have a large advantage here after bishop to b5 which is a very typical maneuver in the french to move the bishop to d7 and then to b5 and now white's castling is prevented which is i mean it's really annoying it makes it really hard for them to make any good progress the engine's best move here is the crazy king to d2 because castling if you can't actually castle you must castle by hand i mean yeah if, if they have to play this i mean you're having a very good time Instead, their best option here is queen to b3, um, getting their queen in the way, and here I would recommend rook to b8, get a very strong battery here and threaten to win the pawn. 
you're likely going to win the pawn back or have much more than enough compensation in return. You have fantastic chances in the bishop to e free line. And now let's look at their last and likely objectively best option, which is the move a free here. The point of a free is that after we capture on c5, white now plays b4. And their bishop is going to come to b2 and they're just going to get a large space advantage however we are not going to let that happen after b4 we have to move our bishop back and the best square is bishop to e7 controlling some very important squares but that might look a bit odd because now the knight cannot really develop to the square that it wants to develop but we have a plan after knight to f3 the move we're going to play here is f6 and this is the very key and important pawn break that i want you to remember in this position immediately trying to open up the center except we're not going to capture just yet we're going to force white to capture after like bishop to b2 we now want to play a5 just a nice little move uh force white to push up to b5 and now we play knight to d7 now there's no pinning business that white can do here and we're adding more pressure to white's center but after bishop to d3 it looks like our position has run dry but no we're going to add more pressure with knight to h6 and knight to f7 now we have so many pieces attacking here white must make a decision they're going to capture most likely that is their only good move at which point after bishop takes an f6 bishop takes and queen takes white's only good option here and i remind you only good option because otherwise we'll just run up to e5 and potentially e4 and just start rolling over white is to play c4 and really try to strike in the center but here we would play knight to c5 bishop backs up and now we can simply play b6 and this is where i'm going to end our analysis however here i think you have great chances in this position we're then going to play bishop to b7 try to get our bishop on this very long diagonal castle we're going to have the open f file and i think you have great chances in this position it is a bit of an odd position but chances are white will have no idea what they're doing blunder quickly and you're going to have a very good time all right, so that is everything for the advanced variation after e5, and I recommend pawn up to c5. But now let's look at white's second most common main line. This one is the classical variation. So e4, c6, d4, d5, and in this case, white decides to defend their center pawn with knight to c3 or knight to d2, the modern variation, they will transpose into each other, it really does not matter. After knight to c3, we are going to capture on e4, they capture back, and we are going to play knight to f6. Our intention with this move is we are developing the knight, and if white captures, we are going to take it back with the e pawn and go into the dangerous tartakower variation. Real quick though, before I look at that, I will look at one declined variation, knight to g3. This is not very good, however it is very common, so I will show you what to do against it. If they play this, then the move we want to play here is h5. Just trying to annoy white and push up to h4 and cause them to have to move their pieces around and be very annoying. So likely white here will play h4 to just stop that, but now after bishop to g4, we attack the queen pawn to f3 would just be way too weakening here so they instead play bishop to e2 at which point we simply play e6 and after like knight to f3 we now play bishop to d6 here we are immediately attacking the knight and threatening to double their pawns and give them a horrible structure you already are taking the advantage in this position so that decline variation is not very good instead what's much better is for them to capture and we capture back with the pawn. Now, white's absolute best option here is c3, followed by bishop to d3 and queen to c2. I will look at this in just a moment, but first I'll look at the line that is very, very common, that being knight to f3 first. Now, this move does not really put the pressure on us, and in these types of positions, we have the potential to unleash a deadly sacrifice, brilliant sacrifice, brilliant, great, incredible, 
and we can win the game very fast. I'll show you what to do. I'll show you that in just a second, but first I'll show you the normal setup we get in the Tardikauer. So first we want to move the bishop to d6, uh, controlling the squares, and after, let's say, bishop to d3, you want to castle, c3, give this check if you can, or just move the rook over to e8 anyways, let's say bishop to e3, and you want to rotate this knight to d7 to f8. What it does when it is there is it is controlling, or sorry, protecting the h7 pawn, so no queen to c2 and you know bishop takes on the h7 business, as well as potentially going to g6 or to e6 and attacking in the future um, in over to g6, that attacking idea I will actually show you in just a moment. So let's say white goes h3 here. Preventing any pity business, we will now play bishop to e6 and then queen up to d7. And here, let's say white plays a move like a4. A move on the queen side, just taking some space. We're actually now winning in this position with the deadly bishop takes on h3. I won a game with this exact sacrifice just a couple of days ago against a 2200. If it works against 2200s, it'll work at your level. And if white captures back, if they don't capture, we'll just be up a pawn with a great position. We now capture back with the queen. And the mark of when the sacrifice works is when this knight is hanging, because that means we have a tempo. Now, the knight cannot just, you know, move away somewhere, because then queen to h7 is simply checkmate, or sorry, queen to h2. Instead, white's best try here would be something like queen to d1 protect the knight, but now we have the very important knight to g6. Now, if white just plays something random, then we would simply play knight to h4 now, attacking the knight, threatening queen to g2, uh, checkmate, which cannot be stopped if they capture, then queen to h2, so there's simply just checkmates everywhere. White's best try here would likely be to capture our knight, we'd recapture with the h-pawn, but now that the light square bishop is gone, after rook d1, we now have the opportunity to do a deadly rook lift with rook to e4. And rook to g4 checkmate cannot really be stopped. There's some ways, but rook to g4 checkmate cannot really be stopped. And while that was just one example of how my personal um, sacrifice just panned out, there are many different ways it can pan out, but keep that bishop takes on h3 idea in mind, since it can actually happen in so many positions in the Tardikauer, and it works at surprisingly high levels. All right, so that is the Tardikauer setup, and also the little Tardikauer sacrifice you may also get occasionally but now let's look at white's absolute best setup here which is to go c3 and then bishop to d3 here note not bishop to d3 first because this actually just hangs upon we can safely take on d4 here because there is no you know check business and after like queen to b6 here we are just up upon in this position so keep that in mind bishop to d3 first does not work c3 then bishop to d3 and after we castle white now goes queen to c2 here and the problem for us is that after we give this check and white blocks our knight is not on d7 yet, so it cannot come to f8 immediately and defend the pawn, which is kind of annoying. So instead here, we must play the move h5. This move, at first glance, probably looks odd, and it likely should. Why are we playing h5? The idea here is that instead of going h6 and acting as a hook for white, we're pushing it up to h5. That way, in the future, we can actually push it all the way up to h4, and I'll show you how this idea can lead to white uh, leading a non-successful attack. So let's look at something like knight to e2. Now, we carry through with the normal plan, knight to d7. White will most likely long cast. Castle. This is their best try for an advantage in this line. Knight to f8. Let's say king to b1. Uh, protecting this pawn. And now we go bishop to e6. And let's say white tries h3. The idea here is to try to go g4 and just try to start attacking us. But we are immediately going to stop that with bishop to d5. And this is likely how you will best remedy this attack. Bishop to d5. 
um, attacking this pawn. White will most likely defend it. Uh, rook d to g1. And now we go b5 here. And the idea here is that if white ever does successfully get g4, we would then push up to h4, and white actually cannot really make any progress. And they can't really do it here because then they would just lose a rook. And while white is trying to start some attack on the king side that is actually likely too slow, we're going to go h5 and h4 and h3 and move our queen in. And our queen side attack is actually going to be much faster than white's um, king side attack. We can likely then go pawn up to b4 in the future. Really try to start crashing through on white side. I think you have great chances in this position. And that, after all, is more important than anything. And I think you have a great game here. Alright, so that is the Tardikauer variation and what to do against knight to c3 or knight to d2, the classical or modern variation. We would go knight to f6 and get this position. But now let's look at white's third most common main line, the Karo Khan exchange. Now this is not white's absolute best try for an advantage, but it is very common and you should know what to do against it. So let's say e4, c6 d4 d5 and now white trades in the center is the exchange variation do keep in mind that there are a lot of transpositions in the carol con especially if the exchange knight to f3 d5 captures captures and then d4 is an especially common one but still you're going to get pretty much the exact same positions and they will transpose 99 percent of the time and after this happens, I'm going to give you one setup that will give you a massive amount of success against no matter what white tries to do here. White's absolute best try here is to go bishop to d3 first. They can also try like knight to f3 first, but after like knight to c6, we're going to play this in pretty much the exact same way. Let's say bishop to d3. We now go knight to c6 here attacking the pawn in the center and white will now play knight to f3 here if they instead play pawn to c3 first uh defending their pawn in the center then we're going to go queen to c7 and this right here is the key setup after knight to f3 and bishop to g4 this is likely going to transpose into the other line which i will show right now knight to f3 bishop to g4 getting this pin right here c3 e6 now that the bishop is out of the pawn chain castles let's say bishop to d6 and i am opting for you to play this bishop to d6 and then knight g to e7 setup as compared to a more typical knight to f6 and a bishop to e7 setup because i think it really limits white's chances and i there's no pinning business which is also a very nice touch bishop to g5 we just would play queen to c7 there's really not much there after bishop to e3 we now want to play h6 and then we're going to castle on the next move do be wary because in this position after castles this would actually be a massive blunder because a bishop takes h7, king takes, and knight to g5 check, and we're just going to lose a pawn here. Do be wary of that because a lot of people do not um, know about that. Castling is the most common move in this position despite that blunder. We go h6 first, and then castles. Now we play the typical queen to c7, getting our queen and bishop linked on the same diagonal. And your plan here is now very simple. Let's say white plays some random move here. This is, this is, they probably won't play this, but I'm just trying to show you the setup. We would now play rook over to c8, and then you want to go a6, b5, and rotate this knight to the c4 square like so. I have used this plan countless times with a6 and b5. Uh, it works wonders for me. If they capture, then you can capture back with the B pawn, and now you have the open B file to play around with, and the C4 pawn is a massive nuisance for white to deal with. You have fantastic chances in the Carol Khan exchange. It's really not that strong of an option for white. They can get a, you know, fine position, but if white is really trying to put the pressure on you, I do not think this is a strong variation, but now you know what to do against it good on you. Alright, so those are the three main lines, those being the exchange, uh, the classical, and the advanced variations, but now I'm going to start getting into some of the other sidelines that you're going to see less commonly, but you probably should still know if your opponent does play them.
the first one I'm going to look at is the Panov attack. That comes after e4, c6, d4, d5, the exchange, but here instead of playing a normal bishop d3 or knight f3 or c3, they instead play c4. This is the Panov attack, and white is immediately striking at our center and trying to either get us to capture and help them develop, or potentially going to add even more pressure here and try to capture us and end up winning a pawn, and this can be very dangerous. I actually suffered for a long time against this variation, but I'm going to show you exactly what to do to beat it. That is after knight to f6 defending and knight to c3 you're not going to go into the knight to c6 and knight to f3 and queen to b3 and all the mainline mumbo jumbo that nobody can even decipher you're instead going to play pawn up to g6 the fianchetto defense and from now on black scores very well white here will almost certainly capture if they do not if they instead play like queen to b3 or knight to f3 first they are going to capture on d5 inevitably and the positions are very similar or they will directly transpose into each other and after they capture you actually want to play something called the fianchetto gambit with bishop to g7 you do not need to recapture immediately white will most likely just develop here knight to f3 at which point we once again do not need to capture back immediately we're simply going to castle here and after bishop to c4 most likely if white does actually try to hang on they're going to really pay the price knight b to d7 white will castle and then we go knight to b6 attacking the bishop as well as adding another attacker to the d5 pawn which we will eventually capture and when we do end up uh, capturing that pawn our bishop will then be unleashed on the d4 pawn and you can see our pieces are going to start working together really well bishop to b3 is white's best option here just backing the bishop up if they try queen to b3 here and try to defend their bishop and really keep the pawn it is not going to work out we go bishop to f5 and the idea is after white moves we now just sit play rook to c8 the bishop is attacked anyway so it must move likely bishop to f1 is their best option but now we take on d5 we're going to take with the f knight reason being we open up our bishop and while the engine does slightly prefer white here or giving equal, I would definitely take black's position here. Our pieces are working very well together. White has a massive weakness on d4, an isolated pawn. We also have a very strong piece that is controlling the square in front of it, which is exactly what you want to do. And also white's development is quite lagging behind. Or at the very least, our pieces are kind of misplaced. What is the bishop doing on f1? It's not very good. This is just a worse version of the main line that being bishop back to f3 now we capture on d5 once again with the f knight to open up the bishop and after like rook to e1 we now play bishop to g4 and the move bishop to e4 sorry bishop to g4 might strike you as a bit odd because white here now can win a pawn but seems a bit more permanent after h3 or actually sorry if they try to win the pawn with knight takes on d5 knight takes bishop takes queen takes and rook takes on e7 here you can capture on f3 and immediately win this pawn however what is actually even more powerful here is to simply play a move rook a to c8 and white's position is just terrible here their pawn is super weak and white has to be very careful where they develop if they just play bishop to e3 and try to defend the pawn here then now bishop to f6 and the rook is actually trapped you're actually just you know winning in this position maybe not completely winning but you're going to get a massive advantage once again back in this position the engine prefers black only slightly but i would really really want to be black in this position rather than white because our pieces are just working so well together while whites are kind of odd and uncoordinated this pin's very annoying yeah so that is what happens if they actually try to uh you know really win the pawn but that still doesn't work their best try here is h3 to attack our bishop force us to make a decision at which point we trade on f3 they recapture 
and now with all's pressure here you simply want to play e6 now the rook does not make that much sense because um it's not really looking at anything the pawn is defended the pawn also defends the knight very well in the center now you have a good position here the engine is once again giving about equal but once again i would really prefer to be black here with the um very fun opportunities that are rising with this bishop looking at the very weak pawn on d4 now then play likely rook to c8 uh take the open file you have great chances in this position. So that's what to do against the pan of attack. Now let's look at the next one, this being the two knights. So I skipped ahead a little bit here. Back here, e4, c6, and knight to f3, d5, and knight to c3. This is the two knights attack, and there are some very fun lines here. However, the line I'm about to give is going to give white absolutely no fun. I'm talking about the Mindeno variation. That comes after bishop to g4 in this position, immediately giving this very annoying pin here, and white has a couple of options. First, however, I'm going to look at the main line here, which is h3 immediately attacking the bishop and we are going to trade here we capture they recapture with their queen and in pretty much all of these positions we're going to get a kind of french setup where we have a large advantage what i mean by that is here we're going to play knight to f6 this move might look a bit odd we are attacking white center however it looks like they can just push up to e5 and our life is now very annoying but this is actually not the case we back up to d7 now and after like d4 we now play e6 and you see we're going to get a french position with just kind of a nice advantage because after let's say bishop d3 and c5 here white cannot play the very normal c3 because their knight is in the way so instead they're much more likely to try bishop to e3 here if they just capture we can just recapture with our bishop great position not really too much to uh, complain about here or sorry actually knight takes on e5 is what i meant to play uh attacking the queen attacking the bishop then we can capture the pawn we have a good position because of that most people in this position try bishop to e3 instead to defend their center but this move actually completely loses and even though it's the most common it completely loses because of the following line knight to c6 now attack in center white now tries to capture but it doesn't work the same we take on e5 importantly with the d knight that way our queen is opened up and after queen to g3 knight trades on d3 we can then play d4 and we are simply winning here because we get this very nice central fork so that is that very nice variation and why e5 is not very good for white in these positions instead their much better try is d3 at which point now we push up to d4 attack the knight and force it to move away knight to e2 is the most natural move at which point we do not play e5 instead we actually play the move e6 the reason is that the pawn on e5 would really just act as a target for white to attack, and because we play e6 first, if white plays bishop g5, we can simply go bishop to e7 and undo the pin, and we will then go c5, defend our center, develop our knight, castle safely, and we have a great position here. Let's say long castles, knight c6, you're doing very well. So. That is how to kind of handle the two knights. There are two other lines in this position rather than h3, but they are very samey. If they try bishop to e2, then now I recommend to go e6 in this position. We get the legendary pyramid of Giza, how incredible, and after let's say castles, now we go knight to f6, we once again see the same pattern, and if they try to push up to e5, then we have a very similar position after knight back to d7, d4, and you can play c5 immediately here, but what is slightly better is to go bishop to e7, castle first, and then try to go c5, you have a very good position, if they instead play d4, once again it's the same kind of thing, knight to f6, they push up to e5, knight drops back to d7, bishop e2, e6, it's the same idea as we're going to go c5, knight c6, and that is what to do against the two knights variation. Now let's look at the fantasy variation. This is e4, c6, d4, d5, and in this position they are going to defend the pawn but not with a knight instead of the pawn 
F3. Now, smooth looks kind of odd, but the idea here is very solid. If we capture, then white now captures back, and they get two big pawns in the center. And although the absolute best line against the fantasy is this, and then to go e5 here, this is very atypical for the Carol Khan. As such, it would not really fit in well if you're having to improvise. And also, this position is extremely razor sharp. I was actually uh, prepping the fantasy variant variation against the Carol Khan because uh, I was preparing to play in a tournament and there are so many lines where uh, black has to just know one or two exact moves I would recommend to completely avoid this and to instead play a very nice sideline queen to b6 what this move does is it moves the queen out of the way as well as puts pressure on the b2 pawns. Now the bishop can um, not really move very easily and white kind of has trouble deciding what to do. They don't really want to capture because then we capture back and f3 is just stupid. Instead, what most people do here is knight to c3, but now we capture, they're going to recapture and we play the very important e5 in this position. And the difference is this position is not nearly as razor sharp, and if anyone has the advantage here, it is much more likely going to be us, and white is not going to get any of the fun attacking. Most people here try knight to f3. If they try to capture on e5, then here you actually just want to go bishop to e6, and now we are playing a gambit against the fantasy variation, and a very good one at that. So we'll most likely go knight to f3, we now play knight to d7, preparing to long castle, let's say bishop to d3 here, um, you know, gain the bishop in front of the queen, that way when we do long castle, the rook will be, uh, you know, not staring at the queen right away. We now play knight to e7, and then knight to g6 putting pressure on the e5 pawn, and we are going to win it, queen to e2, we capture on e5, captures, captures, and after long castles and long castles, you have avoided all of the typical uh, fantasy variation nonsense, and you're very likely here actually going to get a big attack, if white tries like bishop to e3 and to attack the queen, we can now go queen to a5, and the engine gives us a borderline winning here, because our attack that is about to start rolling on white is actually going to to be extremely strong. So that is if they immediately capture our bait on e5. If they do not do that, if they instead play knight to f3 here, just not capturing and just putting some uh, pressure here and defending, we are going to capture. They're going to capture back with the knight. If they capture with the queen, then now you have a very nice endgame after captures, captures, bishop c5, knight back to b3, and we back up to b, or sorry, d6. And this endgame, the engine's giving about equal because we are a little bit behind on development, but what we have to recognize here is that in the structure element, we just had an advantage here because we have free and free pawn islands. However, white has two free and also one hanging pawn, so really just try to attack this pawn and we're going to have very good times in this endgame. And if instead they do capture on d4 of the knight, then we simply go knight to f6, bishop to c4 here most likely and now bishop to g4 here attacking the queen i'm not going extremely in depth not looking at every single line but these are more the general variations and what is most common let's say queen to d3 here you're now borderline winning after knight to b d7 because your knight is likely going to come to e5 attack the queen attack the bishop like if they castle here then knight to e5 and they actually cannot defend the bishop anymore so you're just winning there instead their best try is bishop to f4 to prevent that but now we simply play long castles we once again get that same idea all the same um, tactics are going to apply there's now going to be a pin which is likely going to make it even stronger you have fantastic chances in this position, and that is my recommendation against the fantasy variation. Alright, so now I have the final two variations. These are two kind of dubious, but still gambits you want to know what to do against. The first one I'm going to look at is the hillbilly gambit, e4, c6, and bishop to c4. And this move should just strike you as bad, because now we go d5. And white's uh, actual gambit line here is bishop back to b3. If they just capture, then we simply capture back. This is just bad for white. Bishop backs up. 
then we go bishop to a5 we're gonna go e6 this bishop's terrible you already have an advantage on move four that is just very bad but the gambit line here bishop back to b3 is not entirely bad the idea here is that after we capture the pawn white now goes queen to h5 threatening some nasty stuff on f7 so we go g6 here attack the queen as well prepare to fianchetto and potentially move our knight to f6 to defend the pawn white's best option here is queen to h4 they also have queen to e2 but it'll be pretty much the same if they try queen to e5 this looks good but knight to f6 and white is borderline lost here because like f3 Knight b to d7, the queen is just going to be a massive target, so queen h4 is their best try, and after knight to f6 defending, knight to c3 attacking, bishop to f5, once again keeping the pawn while simultaneously developing, let's say f3 here, and if they capture, they recapture, and now bishop to g7. You are up a pawn in this position, white does have some compensation, they do have some more development as well as the queen uh, is you know out doing something, however they really do not have enough and they don't have, yeah, they don't have enough compensation for the sacrifice pawn and you do just have a nice advantage here. So that is how to handle the hillbilly, that could be a nice video title. And if they instead try, let's look at the last gambit I'm going to look at, that being uh, d4, d5, knight to c3, we capture, and now they go f3. This is the Rasa Studier gambit, but it's basically just a glorified Black Mardemer transposition. And what we're going to do here is pretty much just my recommendation against the actual Black Mardemer, which is to capture, white recaptures, bishop to f5 now. This is a very important development to take away um, this square from the bishop coming there and get the bishop out first. Bishop c4, knight to f6, and after castles, e6, white now has the very tricky knight to e5. This is what you have to watch out for because you cannot just develop normally because then the sacrifice rook takes on f5 and you're actually just losing here. Captures, knight takes on f7 and yeah you're losing that's very bad instead you just want to back up the bishop to g6 uh, not allow any nonsense and protect the pawn at which point life here is pretty easy i mean bishop f4 you would simply play a move like bishop d6 then castle knight b to d7 you were having great times here and you are up a pawn and white does not have sufficient compensation all right everyone thank you so much for watching uh, i know this video is pretty long but if you are actually watching this far why don't you just give me a little subscribe and a little like and i'll appreciate you just a little bit more but anyways thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time have a fantastic day